Hi, welcome to Learn Monkey. I am Vikram. In this class, we will try to understand shortest remaining time first SRTF scheduling algorithm. The concept of shortest job first has already been explained in our previous video. If you haven't watched that video, please watch that video and come back here. And every video on our channel is going to be a part of entire course or a playlist. Our suggestion is to follow the entire course so that you can have better understanding of the concepts. And the link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Now coming to this class, let's try to understand shortest remaining time first SRTF scheduling algorithm. So this algorithm is same as that of shortest job first in our previous video. Which we, where, uh, where we have discussed about the shortest job first algorithm. So this is same as that of the SJF but the difference is SJF is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm but uh, STRF, SRTF is uh, it is a, a preemptive scheduled algorithm. So uh, let's try to understand this. So uh, we'll try to understand this by using this example, the same example that we have taken for FCFS and SJF we are using the same example. So here this is a preemptive algorithm it means that for every time quantum after the end of every time quantum so uh, a new process will move from ready state to running state okay so every time quantum means here we will assume that the time quantum is one unit of time one unit of time for every one unit of time we are going to fetch a new process and the fetching of that new process is done based upon the shortest job shortest remaining time it itself states that it is shortest job okay so based upon the shortest remaining time we are going to fetch the process from the ready state okay and it is done preemptively so for every time quantum for the after the end of every time quantum a new process has to be fetched and that fetching is done by using shortest remaining time so let's try to solve this example uh, here at the 0th arrival time we have only one process this is p1 and among this uh, so we have we have no other choice we have to execute p1 process p1 has to be executed and this will get executed only for one unit of time for only for one unit of time so the burst time will be uh, on it will the remaining time is another one unit of time so okay so you got this point so as we are having uh, the burst time is two units of time out of that one unit of time is done you are left with only one unit of time okay so here we we are making a note of that burst time because we we should not get confused with uh, further process okay so after at this point of time at uh, uh, at one unit of time we are having two processes at this arrival time we are having two processes what are they it is process one and process two so among these two which one is having the shortest remaining time so among these two the shortest remaining time is this one process p1 so again the process p1 will get executed again the process p1 will get executed and it will get executed for only one unit of time okay so by that by this time by this time what are all the processes that are there that are there it is process p1 is there process p2 is there and process p3 is there Try to understand that point so at this point of time at this point of time the the processes that are there in the ready queue are g uh, process 1 process 2 and process 3 so among these three among these three which one is having the shortest uh, so uh, okay so here p1 is done with its job so it is complete it's it is complete it completed its execution okay so we are having only two processes it is process p2 and process p3 among these three these two processes the shortest remaining job is the shortest remaining time is for process p3 so process p3 will get executed for one unit of time and it is done its execution so by this time uh, uh, the, uh, by this time we are having all these four processes process p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay so among these four processes so we are done with this process and this process the execution of this process p3 and process p1 is done we are left with process p2 and p p3 sorry p2 and p4 so among these two the shortest remaining time is this one so process p4 will get executed so process p4 will get executed and this will get executed for the only for one unit of time so this the remaining time is three so at this time at this time 
four. We are having we are having only these four process. So at the at the arrival time is equal to five. At the fifth unit of time, the process P P five also has arrived. But by this time, we are having only uh, process P one, P two, P three, and P four. So among these two. Again, uh, process P4 will get executed because the process P4 is having three uh, three units of uh, burst time. Okay, so it has become P uh, two units. Now this one is five. So by this time, all the processes are there. So P1, P2, P3, and P4, all the processes are there in the ready queue. So once all the processes has arrived, so this point is very important to understand. Try to understand this point. Once all the processes has arrived, what happens is after that we are going to execute the processes continuously. It means so this shortest remaining time first will now behave like shortest job first. Means it is a non prime to scheduling algorithm. So how that happens is so whatever may be the uh, uh, whatever may be the time quantum. So we are left with so for example here at this point of time at this point of time we are left with process P. Two, P4 and P5. Among these three, which one is having the shortest job, uh, shortest remaining time? So this one is having the shortest remaining time. So even after one time quantum, it is the only process which is having the shortest remaining time first, right? So it is the only process it is, which is having the shortest remaining time. So we are going to execute. So this now this algorithm shortest remaining time first, which is a preempt to scheduled algorithm, will now behave like SJF, which is a non preempt to scheduling algorithm. Okay. So we are going to take this uh, process P to P4, and the entire process will get executed. So all these two units of time is done. So it is going to be seven units. So till now we have taken only one unit amount of time, but it is of no use take, considering only one unit of time because every time this one this process is the process which is having the shortest remaining time. So that is the reason why we are going to take the uh, processes continuously, same as that of SJ, SJF, shortest job first. Okay. So now we are left with this process, pr process P5. The process P5 will come into the running condition and the burst time is 3. So it is going to be 10. And after that, it is going to take process P2, which is having the burst time of 15, which is having the highest burst time, which is taken at the end. See how uh, logical it is. The Among this process, the highest burst time is for P2. It is taken at the end. Okay. In order to maintain that average time, uh, efficient average uh, waiting time so it is it has came into uh, running loop okay so this is this are this is how the shortest remaining time job first will uh, remaining time first will get executed and uh, the point that we have to understand is uh, uh, how this process how uh, the preempt to algorithm will work that is very important to understand okay and uh, apart from this if you take the completion time try, turn around time so the completion time is it is uh, so to get the completion time we have to come from that end because the the numbers the process numbers are repeating if you go in this way it, it you may get confused if you start from there it will be very easy because first the p2 has arrived uh, we we get the p2 which is having a uh, completion time of 15 units so 15 units and p5 p5 is having an uh, completion time of 10 units and p4 is having uh, a completion time of 7 units and this one is p4 p4 p3 p3 is having a uh, uh, P3 is having a, a completion time of 3 units and similarly P1 P1 is having 2 units of time okay completion time and what about turnaround time the turnaround time is it is completion time minus arrival time so 0 uh, 2 minus uh, 0 the turnaround time is 2 15 minus 1 the turnaround time is 14 3 minus 2 the turnaround time is Okay, the turnaround time is 1. 7 minus 3, which is 4. 10 minus 5, which is 5. Okay, and what about waiting time? Waiting time is, it is turnaround time minus burst time. It is 2 minus 2. The burst time is 2. Okay, which is 0. 14 minus 5, which is 
नाइन वन माइनस वन विच इज जीरो फोर माइनस फोर ओके टर्न अराउंड टाइम माइनस बर्स टाइम दिस इज ऑल्सो हैविंग जीरो फाइव माइनस थ्री दिस इज टू ओके सो दिस इज दिस इज दीज आर ऑल द वेटिंग टाइम्स द एडवांटेज विद दिस शॉर्टेस्ट रिमाइनिंग टाइम फर्स्ट इज the shortest job uh, shortest job first will also have uh, what we call it as conway effect so there is a possibility to have a conway effect in the shortest job first but in shortest remaining time first there is no possibility of conway effect so let's try to understand this concept of conway effect the conway effect is there in the first come first serve uh, uh, scheduling algorithm but in the shortest job first also there is certain cases where we are going to get the uh, uh, that concept of conway effect so what that means is for example if we are having a, a process three processes 1 2 and 3 and the arrival times are 0 1 and 2 and the burst times is for example if the burst time is this one is 10 and this one is 1 and this one is 2 now as the arrival time is 0 so at this point of time there are no other processes we are having only one process which is process p1 so if we if we take this process into the running state as the shortest job first is a preempt to algorithm so it has to wait so the remaining processes has to wait until the completion of this entire process so this is what we call it as a conway effect right so that that happens in the shortest job first also the conway effect is also there in the shortest job first in the uh this is this is the case where there is a possibility of shortest job first uh, there is a possibility of conway effect in the shortest job first also but it is not the case in the shortest remaining time first because it is a preemptive algorithm see here if that is the case if that is the case if we take the process p1 it will get executed only for one unit of time only for one unit of time immediately so this becomes nine immediately this process will come into existence process p2 will come into existence now among these two processes we are going to choose only the process which is having the lowest burst time which is process p2 we are not going to take a, a process p1 again okay but in the shortest job first once it come into the running condition we have to wait until the completion of that entire process so this is what we call it as conway effect so in shortest job first also there is a possibility of conway effect okay but in the case of shortest remaining time first we don't have we don't have any possibility of conway effect okay so this is all about shortest remaining time first hope you got the clarity on this